In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it has been suggested that we put a branch on the door of our homes or on the window to celebrate Palm Sunday. It could be any green branch you can get. And this would help. This would help despite the social distancing to be connected. To be connected as we enter into the holiest of weeks. And so, please join me in this uh, prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ, the King of exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed this lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in His resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said. You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Surely you hear how many charges they bring against you. But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas, so, when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you wish me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, the so-called Messiah? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over while he was still seated on the bench. His wife sent him a message. Do not interfere in the case of that holy man. I had a dream about him today, which has greatly upset me. The chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which one do you wish me to release for you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what am I to do with Jesus, the so-called Messiah? They all said, Crucify him. But he said, Why? What crime has he committed? They only shouted the louder, 
Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. The responsibility is yours. And to the whole, and the whole people said in reply, Let his blood be on us and our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, All hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him off to be crucified. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right, the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, So you are the one who was going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself, why don't you? Come down off that cross if you are God's son. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel? Let's see him come down from that cross, and then we will believe in him. He relied on God. Let God rescue him now if he wants to have him come down. And after all, he claimed, I am God's son. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders heard it and said, he is invoking Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Leave him alone. Let's see whether Elijah comes to his rescue. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit.
And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many spirits who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Clearly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Friends, today is known as the Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday. And I've been reflecting and thinking through about, though about a different name for this day, a name that we all can connect to. What if we renamed today Turmoil Sunday? Does that sound like the gospel to you? And perhaps reflecting on what's happening in our world, in our country, that may be a fitting name, Turmoil Sunday. And despite what we see, our expectations and hopes for the day, and even what we want to believe, the city itself, Jerusalem, has a very different experience of and respond to Jesus' triumphal entry. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? Jesus and turmoil seem to go together. Kind of reminds me of what's happening in our world today. And we need to be reminded that the Lord is our shepherd. And we shall not be <clears throat> in want. We needed to be reassured that all shall be well. And we continue to stand in the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of 
COVID-19. But I think it's important for us that as we witness this horrific news each and every day about the spread of the disease, this virus, I think it's a story about the people who have still a future. If all shall be well, it's the name that runs through Psalm 23. I encourage you to, to pray this psalm. Then you shall live is the theme that runs through our prayers. It's a story of promise. It's a story about us having future. And I sense perhaps this feeling of powerlessness. And I picture us looking and, and shaking our heads at the overwhelming enormity of it all. God only knows when our lives will be whole again. And that's how I feel every time I read the newest numbers of cases, job losses, and financial hardships. And I am guessing you might feel the same way. And I know how easy it is to focus on and despair over the number of these dreadful cases and the people, the number of people who are affected by it. But I also know that it is not the final story of God and God's people. So I want to give you a sense of encouragement and focus your attention on perhaps praying the Psalm 23 and those promises and reassurances are the path we walk in this valley. And so perhaps the next time you read the numbers in the news, The next time you get scared, the next time you get anxious and overwhelmed, remember that there are other numbers. Remember God's promises. Remember God's reassurances. And then listen. And th then listen to this rattle, this rattling sound, sounds like faith 
hope, and love. It sounds like courage and a refusal to be ruled by fear. It sounds like praying Psalm 23. It, so it sounds like church bells ringing in remembrance. And there's a new directive that was issued uh, by uh, Bishop Rosansky. And then we posted the new directives on our social media and on our website. And on Easter Sunday at 10 a.m., our bells will ring. And the reason behind this ringing is to remember that COVID-19 that COVID will not have the final say. And it sounds like helping those who have lost jobs or work hours. It sounds like patience, gentleness, and compassion for others and ourselves. It sounds like support and care for healthcare providers, first responders, and essential workers. It sounds like people asking, are you okay? Do you need anything? It sounds like people smiling and laughing as they connect on Zoom. It sounds like a text message saying, all shall be well. It sounds like an openness to the future. It sounds like life, a life that is full of promise. So let's make sure that as we celebrate this turmoil of this day, please remember uh, that is also the triumph of this day, the triumph of Palm Sunday. It is Christ's earth-shaking entry into the world and our lives. It is a triumph, triumph that will continue to be revealed throughout this week. It is a triumph, a triumph that happens whenever and wherever Christ is present. And make no mistake, Christ is present in our midst. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The life of the world to come. To come. Amen. Dear friends, in new and unexpected ways, our Lenten journey has come and has become an arduous way of the cross. In company with Jesus, let us pray for the whole human family at this time of global crisis. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Christian communities around the world. May their loving care for all in need be a powerful sign of the saving death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the light of the world, may cast out rivalry and the worship of power from the minds of the leaders of nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died as a result of COVID-19, that their family and friends might find consolation and comfort, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may bless health care workers, doctors, nurses, first responders, police, firefighters, and all others who minister to the sick and suffering, and those working to keep society function, keep them safe and healthy, and grant them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all whose mental health is jeopardized by isolation and, con and confinement. May the support of family and friends help them cope with this challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give wisdom, creativity, and perseverance to all medical professionals, researchers, policymakers, and leaders as they respond to this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Guide us in finding and developing the resources, medical skill, and political will to contain and end this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Open our hearts and hands to assist and care for those who will lose their jobs or be affected financially by COVID-19, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for front frontline health workers and all essential personnel May their dedication inspire us to new levels of generous service and neighborly care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the light of the world, may raise the dead to eternal glory. And among them, we remember Kippy Gentile, Wayne Bennett, Rose LeBeau, Gail Nelson, Kim Richer, Christina Wegerson, Minnie and Catherine Kucha, Leo, Renee and Henley, Henry Sear, Anna Arabia. 
For the repose of their souls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, we are imploring the special protection of Our Lady to invoke her prayers against the COVID-19 pandemic affecting the world. Let us pray together. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, the Lord is, is with, with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst Lord, women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And let's, let us pray for one another. May we find new ways to pray, be connected in faith, and to celebrate the Paschal Mystery in this holy week, like no other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Living and life-giving God, your Son emptied himself to become one of us, even unto death. Deliver us from the fear of death and help us live in the freedom of faith. And we ask this, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all, his holy church. 
through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please join me in the reciting prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. regarding the newest directives uh, from our Bishop Rosansky. All masses, services, and parish events, with the exception of take and eat, are suspended until further notice. This includes funerals, weddings, and all drive-up events, including confessions and adorations, churches must remain closed. Palm distribution, no distribution of palms is to take place in any form. Parishes should retain palms if they have received them for distribution after restrictions are lifted. Anointing and reconciliation. For the time being, like other sacraments, anointing and reconciliation rites must be temporarily suspended. Easter bells. Parishes with bells or bell systems are asked to ring their bells at 10 a.m. on Easter morning. Weddings, all weddings should be rescheduled to a later date. And if priests feel there are special circumstances, they should contact the bishop directly. Funerals. Funerals must now be restricted to clergy-led funeral home services only and limited to state mandated 10 people total. Cemetery rights will be restricted to just the undertakers and clergy member, clergy at the graveside. Pastoral ministers may not conduct these services. Families should encourage to plan a memorial mass and or a graveside service at a later date. Confirmations and First Communions. All confirmations will be rescheduled to the fall and parishes should reschedule First Communions after all restrictions are lifted. And I want to take this opportunity and, and thank our uh, parishioners for your um, generous support, for the donations that are coming. I want you to know that uh, donations are greatly appreciated. Again, we listed the ways in which you can um, send your um, weekly con contributions to us. And um, so I thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for your uh, generosity and your uh, generous spirit. And um, this, as we enter this holy week, Again, we will stay connected and um, you will be able to witness the Holy Triduum on 
Wednesday at 7 p.m. So please make sure uh, that you uh, watch our uh, Tridum on channel uh, 1301 and also on our social media. Holy Thursday, again, 7 uh, p.m. On Friday, Good Friday, we have Stations of the Cross at noon and the Passion of Our Lord at 3 uh, p.m. Easter Vigil on Saturday at 7 p.m. And of course, Easter Sunday, our regular time, uh, 10 um, a.m. So it is important that in this time we, we stay connected. And I thank those who are involved in our ministry. Uh, I am thankful to our music director and uh, Michael, thank you, uh, to Marianne and Flo for your, for your presence, for your continued support and uh, to you, uh, Sue, for your uh, presence, and of course, our, uh, our deacons, and our new altar server, uh, Caleb, and thank you for your, for your presence, and uh, that you are uh, were willing to, uh, to come and uh, assist us in our uh, celebration. And of course, uh, to you, uh, Matthew, uh, without your help, your expertise, and uh, this would not be possible. So I, I thank you, and I know that our parishioners are very grateful uh, that we have you. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe. So by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the glory, to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us be at peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.